Hello. You're on my train, I see. Yes, I've come from Valadilen. It's been a long time since I've seen a train here. Students, did you bring students with you? No, I traveled alone. Well, almost alone. I remember around the start of fall, a train would bring kids from all around the world here to study zoology and botany, paleontology, and all that stuff. This was a great university. And it isn't still great today, then? Uh, today? Well, uh, Have you been the station master of Barugstad for a long time? I've never had another job. Now, you tell me, are you in charge of this train? No, I mean, I'm not sure. So what's your thing here? You come here to do some bookworming over at the university? Well, sort of. I'm always looking for new information. Hmm, well, you don't seem to know a lot. And about that train, it's going to get in the way if you leave it there, that's for sure. In fact, I'm a lawyer and I'm conducting a pretty unusual investigation. Investigation, huh? Uh, hey, uh, you, you know, uh, I, I'm just a station master. I, I don't know too much about anything. Well, you never know. Anybody could be significant in this case. You see, uh, nobody actually tells me anything, so my hands are totally clean. I never implied they weren't. You don't know where I might find equipment to wind up my train springs, do you? Well, not in this station, that's for sure. And I would know. You might want to try near the wall. So, uh, thinking of staying for long, miss? Uh, no. I mean, I don't know, actually. One or two days tops. You see, I've got to wind my train back up so that I can continue my journey. It's just, uh, if you stay here too long, I might get in trouble. Train should stop, then leave again. That's the rule. Besides, your machine's disturbing the birds. Maybe you could take me up to this wall? If there were two of us, we could find what I need to wind up my train even quicker. Uh, miss, forgive me, I, I gotta stick to the rules. You know, I have to man the station. I don't want to get into trouble with my superiors at the university. Uh, you understand? You don't know where I might find equipment... Uh, not... Uh, no. It's... Maybe you... Uh, I won't disturb... Welcome to Barokstad, miss. I'm sorry to disturb you. What can I do for you, miss? I feel like I've lost my way a little here. I could really do with your help. Hey, anything I can do, miss, you just let me know. The name Hans Varlberg doesn't mean anything to you by chance, does it? Oh, do you really think I'd remember one little name from the thousands that passed through this station? I'm sorry to junk up your station like this, but the spring mechanism on my train needs winding. A spring-operated locomotive? Uh, there's a thing. Yeah, and an impractical thing, too. Yeah, I always dreamed of taking a train, but now I'm over the hill. And someone has to take care of the birds, after all. All these birds in a station. It's amazing. This is no ordinary station, miss. Oh, no. These birds are part of the prestigious University of Barockstadt Ornithological Collection. Over the years, this aviary has housed some of the most fantastic species from all over the world. And I am not exactly your typical station master, either. This little world is my responsibility, and that is no easy task. I can well believe you. And you know what's the hardest? The hardest thing is to keep interspecial harmony. And one day some explorer introduced a couple of cuckoos from the Amazon. Oh. It wasn't a good idea? A nightmare. You know, cuckoos lay their eggs in the nests of other species, right? Now what's more, they also push the host's eggs out of the nest so that they receive all the mother's attention, right? Accursed cuckoos. Nightmare. I see what you mean. That's one tricky bird. And there was nothing you could do to stop it? The faculty declared the bird a protected species. If it wasn't for our mechanical eagle, we were sitting on a major ornithological catastrophe. You have an automaton here? A wonder of technology. It's an eagle that's mounted on rails in the air. It passes through and it swoops down to collect parasite eggs. But heck, the dang eagle's been out of order for several years. Impossible to collect the eggs myself. 
Why not? I, uh, I can't climb up the gangway. I fell off it several months back, and I still have a pain in my spine. Not to mention the vertigo I've been getting. I only, only have to look up in the air. Whoa. You poor soul. That must be very hard. Worst thing is, cuckoo eggs piling up in the nests. Soon the rectors are gonna notice. There's trouble in store, big trouble. I'm worried. Yep, worried. I won't disturb you any longer, Mr. Station Master. Welcome to Barrockstadt, miss. That looks broken. Hey there, on the boat. Guten Tag, schöne Mademoiselle. My husband say, hello, young lady. You want to talk to us? My name is Kate Walker, and I'm a lawyer. I'm in charge of this train. This situation is really very new to me. Lawyer, good job. Earn lot of money. A lot? A, a lot? No, I wouldn't go that far. But I, I can't really complain, I guess. There's worse. Lawyer always ask a lot of money. Can we change the subject, please? I really don't want to go down this road. Are you from Barakstadt? Yet. So you're like me. Birds just passing through. I'm stuck here because of my train. Kleine Puskereisen mit uns, no? What did he say? Train kaput. No luck for you. I have a little problem with my train. It's kind of broken. I've absolutely got to get it out of the station. Do you think you could tow it over to the wall with your barge? Lock closed. Barge blocked. But if the locks were open, would it be okay to tow my train then? Por que no? More money for that work. Da, it's possible. My husband say we help you if you give money. Right. And how much do you want? Chiquante. He want one hundred fifty dollar. A hundred and fifty dollars? I don't have that much. No money, no bar. Let me offer you seventy-five. No, one twenty-five dollar. Out of the question. One hundred dollars and not a dime more. Correct. You have barge for one hundred dollar. Great. Now, don't move. I'll be back as quick as possible with the money. You must really get to see the countryside. Do you know New York at all? 
We no understand. I'm looking for a funny little man who is supposed to live in Siberia. Can you imagine that? <laughs> Siberia. I expect you've already been there. Shivraga come to Siberia? Siberia? No. Too cold. Barge no break ice. I hope my train isn't too big for your barge. Tis okay. Motor mot erste klasse. My husband say correct. Powerful motor. I mean, we're not exactly very far from the winding machine, are we? It's dumb, isn't it, all this effort to go a few yards? Put train in barge? Nay, <laughs> not possible. Have you gone down to take a look around the station yet? It's amazing. You know, it's full of exotic birds. Me to my gear? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, my pleasure. We no leave boat. Husband is land sick. It's not very polite of you to take advantage of my predicament. We could have done favors for each other, for free, out of solidarity. Father, father, I lost speak not full. Marty, ah, weak full. Excuse me? My husband say need money for leave. One hundred dollar not lot for fancy lady like you. How would you know a fancy lady like me, really? I'll leave you to it. I won't disturb you again. Dos vidanya. This thing's jammed. Hello. Hey, baby, you party? You sure looking mighty fine. Love those big round eyes. Just who do you think you are? Hey, Spunky. I'd like that in a lady. Okay, I'm hooked. Come on, Zal. I'll let you buy me that coffee. <laughs> I don't remember ever asking. Hey, don't play hard to get. I know you like it big time. Listen, kid. Go back home and play with your toy cars and forget you ever saw me. Excuse me. Sir, please, just a moment. Yes, what is it? I'm not deaf, you know. I am sorry to disturb you in your work, sir, but... This young mammoth is primigenius is barely 40,000 years old. Fantastic, wouldn't you say, miss? Uh, yes. Probably. What do you mean, probably? Uh, I don't know. You don't know? Well, you, you don't know, I see. What can I do for you, my dear child? To tell you the truth, I don't know very much about mammoths, and I'm not here as a student. In fact, I'm a lawyer. It's all right. Nobody's perfect. All the same, the study of the Pleistocene period is fascinating. I'm sure it is, but I'm sorry to say my current mission is totally monopolizing my time. Um, another time, maybe. Oh, that's what they all say. Anyway, let me present myself. I am Cornelius Ponce, 
Emeritus Professor and Lecturer at the University of Barockstadt. I'm proud to say that I'm head of the Department of Paleozoology at our university. Kate Walker, pleased to meet you. It wasn't really my intention to stop off here, but I'll confess, this university is really very impressive. Ah, uh, indeed. There's such a tradition of learning here. And so much knowledge, a real depth of culture, intelligence, and gray matter. I myself did my studies here and never left. Actually, I'm here because I've been summoned by the rectors of the university. Oh, I see. You must have made a mistake on your enrollment form. Uh, oh, no, no. I haven't come here to study. I have an important matter of inheritance to attend to. I have to find the heir. And you hope you will find him here? I'm not altogether sure. But you see, my train broke down coming into Barakstadt Station. In that case, my dear, you must come to one of my lectures. Uh, here's a question for you. Do you know what the Proboscidean Order is? The probo -whatian? I see. There are gaps in your knowledge that need refreshing. I feel I've lost my way a little here. I could really do with your help. Oh, my dear child, you've chosen your moment. I absolutely must finish off my lecture for this afternoon. It's a lecture about mammoths? Oh, yes and no. More specifically, it is about their migration. Do excuse me, I need to concentrate. <sighs> to tell you the truth, I'm looking for Mr. Hans Varlberg. He's the sole heir of a very unusual factory. My company is in charge of negotiations for the takeover of this factory. Uh, at last word, he was living in Siberia, so... As soon as my train is ready, I'll be continuing my journey eastwards. Siberia. Ah, Siberia. But what was it you said again? Said what? You mentioned a name. The person you are looking for. Varlberg. Hans Varlberg. Do you know him? Hans Varlberg. How could I forget him? Such an extraordinary fellow. So inventive. We shared a passion for mammoths, you know, and we bonded over this passion. Without it, I confess, I would have had little to do with an odd, ageless retard like Hans. At the time, we were both students. Well, sort of. Put it this way. Hans had special permission to attend paleontology lectures. You see, he didn't really have the necessary qualifications. In exchange, Hans did a few odd jobs around the university. Your Hans Varlberg sounds uncannily like the one I'm looking for. I'm not sure, my dear. Hans was above all questions of money and business. Just to imagine him running a factory, <laughs> perish the thought. Can you tell me a little bit more about him? He was always a mystery to me. He never said very much, and never quite seemed to grasp what you said to him. He expressed himself instead through his incredible mechanical contraptions. His inventions, I admit, have been much appreciated by the university. The few times we really did talk, it was about his strange interest for mammoths and a doll. Some sort of doll that obsessed him. A doll, you say? Yes. He kept talking about it. One day he described it to me. A sort of children's toy. A miniature mammoth mounted by a mount. It appears he found it in a cave not far from his home. The event all sounds very dramatic. His account was slightly confused, but it awoke a great interest in me. What do you mean? To my knowledge, there was only one tribe who made figurines featuring a mouth, and that tribe is the Yukols. They live in the farthest reaches of Siberia, and for them, the dolls constituted a sacred object illustrating one of their central legends, how such a doll made the journey from the frozen Siberian north to a cave in the French Alps is a mystery to me. Even today, it is beyond my comprehension. Have you considered that Hans Varlberg was maybe making it up? You said yourself he didn't seem to have all his mental facilities intact. No, that's impossible. Hans couldn't invent the story like that. The doll is a sacred part of the Siberian legend. He described it to me in exact detail. Siberia itself is a chimera that paleontologists of the world are very fond of pursuing. 
Arriving in Barakstadt is an amazing experience. I've never seen such a station. Uh, you came by train? Yes, in a kind of clockwork train with a spring mechanism that winds down. Regularly. You mean you drive a train? Young ladies of today never cease to amaze me. Oh, no. I'm not the engineer. The train's engineer is actually an automaton. I am sorry, all this probably sounds very strange. A clockwork train, driven by an automaton? I once knew a man long ago who could have invented such a train. It was he who designed the bandstand in the main square. Ah, to think that he was even capable of creating such a gadget. He was astounding, a true genius. But oddly, at the same time, he was also... Almost a child, it was as if his mental and physical evolution had definitively halted at the age of ten. Can you believe that? Uh, yes. I think I can believe that. At least I'm beginning to. My train stopped in a peculiar aviary. It's very odd. A lot of bird species seem to seek harbor there. Ornithology is far from being my favorite subject, but I must concede that the station is the pride of the university. It was initially intended for teaching purposes, but then birds started arriving from all around the world. <laughs> it seems that there are still rare species breeding there and flourishing. Are there? Can you give me an example? Hmm. I have been told about a kind of bird with peculiar habits. Let's see now. The, uh, um, the Amazon cuckoo. That's right. But, uh, oh, I'm so foolish, I can't remember what was so special about it. Just that its behavior is very peculiar. The Amazon? Where's the Amazon? What is the Amazon? I'm sorry, my dear, but one cannot learn everything in a lifetime. Specialization is the key to real knowledge. Why don't you pay a visit to our library? Thank you very much. Uh, Professor, uh, how do I say this? You see... I didn't think I'd need a lot of money when I set out. And it turns out I need money after all. It's a delicate matter, I know, but I was wondering if you could help me out. My dear, it would be a pleasure. But you see, I barely have enough myself to cover my meager expenditure on what I'm paid by the university. Sorry, I, I didn't mean to offend or... However, if we look at the example of Hans... It is true that our university always rewards people who perform some service for it. This is our dear rector's jurisdiction, however. I'll leave you in peace. I hope I haven't disturbed you too much. Sorry? No, 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 not at all, my dear child. No point. It's locked. No point, it's locked. No point, it's locked.
Good day to you, gentlemen. Tell me, young lady, to what do we owe this pleasure? Please do be brief. We do not have very much time on our hands. As rectors of this university, we have serious matters to attend to, and our time is precious. I have heard you wish to meet the owner of the train that is currently in your station. May I know the reason for your summons? We are surprised that your train has not yet left, miss. The situation is most regrettable. The rules do clearly state that trains are meant to come and go and not remain stationary at a platform. Trains should first stop, then subsequently leave. That is the rule. We agree then, dear colleagues, that what we're dealing with is deviant behavior. This matter really is cause for concern. It's a clockwork train, you see? So it needs winding up again? Unfortunately, there is no equipment in the station to do this. A clockwork train? That's strange. How very quaint. You mean it's some sort of mechanical toy? You are causing a hindrance to us, miss. I am very hopeful that I will find what I need along the wall. The wall? Uh, miss, that really is not a suitable place for you to go. Especially for a young lady. You see, miss, we freely admit that every day we praise the existence of that particular edifice. We owe the integrity of our dear university and the fine education it provides to the wall. It protects us from harm and invasion from the unknown. May God protect us from what is beyond those ramparts, miss. Please believe me. I don't have any choice. I must continue my journey. Uh, such a decision is a correct one, since it's in line with regulations. Thus, your train will indeed be able to leave. And consequently, cease to obstruct our station. I haven't introduced myself. My name is Kate Walker. Walker, Walker, haven't we already had a Miss Walker? Ethnology Masters, September 1953, if my memory serves me correctly. Perfectly well, my dear colleague. But if I may be so bold, it was a Mr. Walker and not a Miss. It was Bill Walker, sat this June 68 exams. The impudent fool turned up for the oral assessment in jeans, flouting strict internal regulations which explicitly state the required uniform for the occasion. Pure incitement. It was scandalous. Sadly, we have seen worse since. Young people lack all respect of traditional values. Tradition, young lady. One must always uphold a tradition. You see, I didn't actually intend to stop here, but the springs of my train gave up, you see? No, not really. You mean to say you're not a student? You have arrived a little late in the term, miss. Enrollment for this year has already terminated. But as rectors of this university, and therefore representatives of its highest authority, we could bend the rules a little, if you like. You don't understand. I'm a lawyer from New York. Or rather, Valadilen, more precisely. My client wants to buy out an old mechanical toy factory, but its heir isn't actually dead and is living somewhere in Siberia. I've got to get to him to sign the sales contract. You see? Not really. This is a most peculiar tale. A kerfuffle of the highest order. We have an excellent law school, if you should ever change your mind. Can you possibly help me out here? Miss, your insistence is almost verging on indecency. We cannot constantly be at your disposal. We have many other requests to attend to. If you don't mind, could you not disturb us all the time? Thank you. Does the name Hans Vorlberg mean anything to you by chance? Ah, one of the brightest, most idealistic intellects to have graced our university. Hans Vorlberg. I remember speaking to him once. I was still a student at the time. He just stared at me, lost in thought for a while. He scarcely ever said a word. But how can one forget him? Idealistic? I'll grant you that. But bright? Oh, don't go too far. He was completely incapable of passing any exams. All he ever did was to sit in on lessons, and not many of them either. Paleontology, mainly. He had an unhealthy passion for mammoths, which matched the state of his intellect perfectly. That is to say, prehistoric. Prehistoric? How 
dare you. A little far-fetched, maybe. But he did have flashes of intellectual brilliance, comprehensible only to high-minded scholars who hold no score by appearances. My dear colleague, your hasty conclusions are somewhat cavalier. My assessment is wholly accurate. The boy was a little odd. You must concur if my father, who was rector of the university at the time, had not shown great indulgence towards him. Hans Vorlberg would have never attended this establishment. What about the bandstand, then? Is that the work of a deranged mind? Even after all these years, you are still jealous of it. My dear colleagues, I beseech you, let's show some decorum. We have a visitor. Uh, what do you want with Hans Vorlberg, miss? Uh, are you a member of his family? No, no, not at all. I'm looking for him to clear up an inheritance matter. Is he still here? What? <laughs> Here? At the university? <laughs> no, not at all. He left a long time ago. Yes, a very long time ago. The very year I was nominated to this position, in fact. Almost 50 years ago already. The poor soul moved on once he learned all he needed to know about mammoths. Ah, this establishment was never quite the same after his departure, it must be said. You mean to say it was never as bad? All that Oddball brought to this university was his misplaced fantasies. Gentlemen, gentlemen, let's try to retain the calm and level-headedness that befits our position. Excuse me? Miss, we find ourselves terribly put out by the presence of your train in our station and by its recurrent immobility. Indeed, the situation is very regrettable. Your huge locomotive is very cumbersome. A train should first stop, then subsequently leave. That is the rule. That idea of the station aviary is really very original. It's the pride of our university. One of the specialties taught here is zoology, you see, and more particularly, ornithology. Proper study and instruction should not be limited to books. Observation of living matter is indissociable from theoretical questions. It contains some very rare specimens that have been brought back from far away exotic countries, especially for our university, by the world's most intrepid explorers. Do you remember Alexander Valembois and his peculiar bird? Absolutely. His gift produced some very embarrassing long-term consequences. A poison chalice indeed. It must be said, the situation could have been much worse, however. Oh, yes, it could have been terribly problematic. Some sailors have agreed to tow the train, but I don't have enough money to pay them. I was wondering if you could help me out. For a while. I could work for the money. Uh, please wait, miss. We have certain confibulations to attend to. That is right. We must confibulate between ourselves. A collegiate decision must be taken. I hope that we are not indisposing you in any way. <coughs> Why not? If it helps us get rid of that train. My word, that is a fine idea. What do you have in mind, gentlemen? Hmm. When you arrived here, you must have noticed a splendid bandstand which honors the main university courtyard. A unique piece of mechanical craftsmanship which no longer works, alas. Why, yes, we have very moving memories of its melodies. We're prepared to offer you a financial reward if you can set it working again. With pleasure. What do I have to do? Unfortunately, my dear, Time and rust have taken their toll on this university, and our automatons no longer have a spring in their step. <laughs> you are going to have to be resourceful. To tell you the truth, there are a number of complex mechanisms here in Barakstadt, and it would appear that we have unfortunately lost their operating instructions. Your train, however, is an extremely ingenious invention, so you should be no stranger to complex mechanisms, should you? We are therefore counting on your ingenuity, miss. I hope that I can show myself worthy of your faith in me, gentlemen. Well, my dear colleagues, one more university matter nicely tied up.
Here we are, busy chat-chatting, and look at the clock. It's tea time. Already? My word, doesn't time fly by? Thank you for a charming visit, miss. And thank you, gentlemen. Excuse me. <clears throat> Can I disturb you a second? No. You could be a little bit nicer about it. Keep quiet. In case you haven't noticed, we're somewhere that requires silence and tranquility.
Do excuse me, Professor. Professor, sorry to disturb you again. What is it you want to know, miss? If I were to say, Forest Sauvignon to you, what would you say? Oh, let's see. Sauvignon. Sauvignon? I would say it's some kind of tropical shrub, don't you think? We are talking about the same plant, then. It is a very rare shrub with small, juicy fruits. I found a book about the Amazon, and it says that there are even Sauvignon plants growing right here in Barakstadt. You wouldn't know where, would you? Mm, Amazon Sauvignon plants here? No. No, I don't think there are any. Hardly implausible, but uh, you should ask the station master. He is keeper of the greenhouse at our university, so he could tell you more than me. Oh, thanks very much. I'll leave you in peace. I hope I haven't disturbed you too much. Sorry? No, 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 not at all, my dear child. Hello? So, you got him then, this air? Ah, it's you, Mr. Marson. Good day, and, and how are you, sir? I'll feel a whole lot better when this whole business is over and the sales contract is signed. Where the hell are you? I'm in Barakstadt. What? What in God's name are you doing there? It's a magnificent university town. It would appear Hans Varlberg once passed by here uh, several years ago. So if he isn't there anymore, then there's no point hanging around. I hear what you're saying, sir, but I have good reason to believe that Hans Varlberg is still alive. For the time being, I'm trying to gather extra information from people who have known him. What's your next destination? I'm not exactly sure, yet. Doesn't sound like you know too much, Kate. I just need a bit of time, Mr. Morrison. Yeah, well, time is what you ain't got. Keep me posted. I'm sorry to disturb you. What can I do for you, miss? Where might I find some forest Sauvignon plants, please? No place around here, that's for sure. I don't know what you're talking about. That stuff's from the Amazon. <laughs> you know, for someone who knows nothing about the plant, you seem pretty well informed about which mysterious faraway country it comes from. Oh, well, I'm... Amazon, Peru, Papua, New Guinea, it's all the same to me. Gotta go. Gotta work. Wait, don't go. You know what? I don't think he was being totally straight with me.
Excuse me, Station Master, but I need you again. Can't you see? I am very, very busy. Uh, no. I, well, well, I am. Very busy indeed. But, uh, okay, okay, I, I think I can give you a minute of my time. I'm looking for a kind of little juicy berry. You don't know where I could find some? Look, lady, the station doesn't have any Sauvignon berries, not even for Sauvignon. Funny you should mention it. That's exactly what I was looking for. Forest Sauvignon. Uh, Sauvignon, raspberries, red currants, they're all the same to me. And we don't grow none of them here. But you see, I have just read a very interesting book, which says that the rare Sauvignon berry is actually cultivated here, in the famous Barlstadt University Avery itself. Well, if it's in a book, then... <laughs> don't believe everything you read, miss. I don't know why, but I don't think you're telling me the truth. What do you mean? I don't know. How should I know where to find your stupid grave? Go ask your professor, what his name, Pons, the paleontologist. But you're the master of this station, so you should know better than anyone. Nobody tells me anything. I don't know. Go see the old guy with the fossils. I won't disturb you any longer, Mr. Station Master. Welcome to Barrockstadt, miss. Do excuse me, Professor. Professor, sorry to disturb you again. What is it you want to know, miss? You wouldn't know where the forest Sauvignon plants are kept in Bauerstadt, would you? Uh, why do you think there are Sauvignon plants here? I read about it in a book at the library. Uh, try going to see the station master. If such a shrub exists, he will have a better idea than anyone. It's actually he who sent me to you. I thought it a little strange, but he definitely said, ask the paleontologist. You're the only one here, aren't you? Yes, yes indeed. What a strange way to behave. Well, I, um, I think he must have made a mistake, that's all. Nobody tells me anything here. Maybe you should ask the rectors. After all, they are in charge of the university. All right, thanks. I'll leave you in peace. I hope I haven't disturbed you too much. Sorry? No, 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 not at all, my dear child. Do excuse me, Professor. Professor, sorry to disturb you again. Professor, I have brought you something that should be of interest to you. Look. What have you got there, then? Let's see. An effigy of a mammoth. But this is Hans Dahl, is it not? Yes, of course it is. How on earth did you... Oh, my God. It's in my hands. It exists. It really exists. Please, please do excuse me. I'm, I'm deeply, deeply moved. You see? Your Hans and my Varlberg heir are one and the same. This is incredible. After all these years, how can I ever thank you, my dear? Oh, I must waste no time. I'm off to my laboratory. I must study this carefully. May I borrow your treasure a moment? Uh, well, actually, uh... Don't worry, miss. I will take the greatest care of it. But I need to study it. You see, it has such importance to me that this very afternoon I shall deliver an impromptu lecture to my students about this very object. If you are interested in Hans Vorlberg, then it is essential that you attend. Hmm? Do you think so? Obviously. 
Give me your telephone number and I will call you the moment my lecture begins. I will return you your doll at the end. You have my word. it you want to know, miss? I would have loved to study at a university like this. No age is too old to start learning, my dear. Maybe, but you know, the eternal student and all. You prefer being an eternal lawyer? I have more important things to deal with. Live problems, not things that died millions of years ago. Everyone has their own priorities, my child. You told me earlier about a lecture on some ancient Siberian tribe called the Ooks or something? The Yukals, my dear. Careful not to confuse them with the Ukistran people of Central Asia. Do excuse me. I, I wanted to know if your lecture is going to start soon. Your eagerness to learn delights me, my dear. But I haven't finished studying this marvelous mammoth effigy yet. Don't worry, I will call you and see you later. What would you say about seeing Hans Varlberg again? After all, you could come with me and help me find him. <laughs> Young lady, you are very kind. <laughs> I'm far too old for such escapades. Your Hans Varlberg sounds uncannily like the one I'm looking for. Can you tell me a little bit more about him? He was always a mystery to me. He never said very much, and never quite seemed to grasp what you said to him. He expressed himself instead through- I'll leave you in peace. I hope I haven't disturbed you too much. Sorry? No, 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 not at all, my dear child. Gentlemen, forgive me for disturbing you again, but I have a little problem. A little problem, a little problem. Everyone has little problems now, you know. They are kept to oneself, and they don't stop the world from turning. Nor trains from leaving stations. Are you sure there are no Amazon Sauvignon plants in Barockstadt? Because I have just interviewed the station master and the paleontologist, and what they said really didn't convince me that there wasn't any here. We are quite definite on this point. There are no Sauvignon plants growing in Barockstadt. You see, miss, the Amazon forest Sauvignon is a rare shrub that requires very special conditions for growth. That's right. Uh, conditions that are very hard to reproduce, believe you me. Difficult, but not impossible. Uh, fortunately. Our garden has proved very successful. Your garden? So, there is a garden in Barakstadt? Oh, the garden. Well, if there was one, it would be only a little garden hidden behind the station. But our station master would be very proud of it. He would take very good care of it, too. Everything would grow marvelously if we were able to cultivate it at all, and it would be all down to his gardening prowess. And we would be proud as punch. And we wouldn't forget the role the paleontologist might play in this. 
What's the paleontologist got to do with it all? Without him and without his laboratory, how would we make the wine, do you think? And it would be good wine indeed, my dear colleagues, would it not? Oh, yes, a delightful balm to soothe away our long hours of toil and our heavy responsibilities. We would wait impatiently every year for the arrival of the year's produce. So, if I have understood you correctly, there are indeed Sauvignon plants in Barockstadt. They are cultivated in a garden behind the station, then turned into wine by the paleontologist's loving care. And finally, the pleasure of tasting is yours. If I'm not very much mistaken, gentlemen, you have a minor racket operating here. Miss, you do go jumping to some hasty conclusions. We never said that. That's not what we said at all. Uh, we, we were talking in the conditional. You know, with ifs and woulds. So, what would happen if I had such a hunch? Hmm, you would have to keep it to yourself, of course. Yes, if, if you would be so kind as to keep it a secret. <laughs> it would only be a small local concern producing barely a few bottles every year. That's right, nothing so grandiose as a business. Otherwise, we'd be liable to be fined. So, we can't count on your discretion, can't we? Don't worry, I have no intention at all of getting messed up in anything. Here we are, busy chat-chatting, and look at the clock. It's tea time. Already? My word, doesn't time fly by? Thank you for a charming visit, miss. And thank you, gentlemen. Excuse me, Station Master, but I need you again. Can't you see I am very, very busy? Uh, no. I, well, well, I am. Very busy indeed. But, uh, okay, okay, I, I think I can give you a minute of my time. You have been playing with me, haven't you? You knew very well there were forest Sauvignon berries in the Station Garden. No, not at all. I've never seen your Sauvignon things. You don't have to lie to me. I know all about it. You and the rectors are in cahoots, and the professor's lab has been turned into a distillery. You've all got a nice little smuggling racket on the side. Smuggling racket? Hey, hey lady, you're going a bit far there. It's just a little on-the-side thing we got going. That's all. It's just for ourselves. Hey, you honest. You should be ashamed of yourselves. Aren't you worried about the reputation of this fine university? The authorities should be informed of this. But we haven't done anything wrong. It's not a crime. Can you open the gate to the garden, please? Oh, sure, sure. No problemo. Right away, miss.
Hans, I have some very sad news. Our father is dead. He passed away peacefully last Sunday in his sleep. I feel so lonely now. Father had been but a shadow of himself since your departure. I had to take care of everything for him. Housework, factory paperwork, the workforce, clients, everything. And now, today, well, I really don't know who or what I'm fighting for. Times are so hard, and this terrible war is destroying everything. Nobody cares for our automatons anymore. I just think about you returning. And when you do return, I will have turned this factory into a palace worthy of your genius. Please take care of yourself. I love you so much, Anna. Free to visit the garden at your leisure. And uh, uh, there was just one thing I don't admire. Not freely. Just mum's the word. There is the reputation of the university to think about. I have superiors who I have to do what I can. I understand. Don't you worry. Oh, thank you, miss. Possible to reach it. Thank you. 
Miss, Miss, please, uh, excuse me. Yes? You know, I want to apologize for our little misunderstanding. I, uh, <laughs> I, uh, I brought you a bottle of wine. Marikstadt Sauvignon. Very good year. Let me know what you think. I'm very touched. Thank you. Good luck on your journey, lady. Thank you. Thank you so much for watching, and hope you enjoyed the video. If you liked this, like, comment and subscribe for more. Have a nice day.